Hello. Hello, friends. So it's another day, and we're going to go over, we're going to finish going over trees, or we're going to continue going over trees. In our last uh, video, we were going out, we did basically an overview of what trees were. We talked about binary trees, complete trees, full trees, perfectly balanced trees, all that stuff. So now what we need to do today is talk about a new big O distinction. So that would be O log N, which we haven't gotten to. So this video is part of a larger playlist called Basic Programmatic Skills, where we go over everything from big O notation to uh, data structures to algorithms to recursion, all that good stuff. So if you come to this video on its own and you don't know about big O notation, just go back to the beginning of the video series. That's where I went over all of the basic big O notation stuff, distinctions. Um, this is a new one and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now this video is largely theoretical and there is some math involved in it. There isn't actually any code in this video, but it is important to understand what big O of log n means and that's what I'm going to try to explain here. It is a little bit tricky, but I think we can get through it. So basically uh, in trees, let's talk about a new big O value that will be big O of log n. So because of the way that binary trees are structured, we can figure out how to calculate the total number of nodes in the tree. So if you have the total number of nodes within the tree, you can figure out certain things. Or if you have the height of the tree, you can figure out certain things. So normally when we code out a, a tree, we will already have the length value of it. But this is, again, like I said, this is theoretical. So we can figure out each way. We can figure out how to calculate the total number of nodes. And we can figure out how to calculate the height. And how that relates to the amount of choices that you would have to make to iterate through the tree structure for like search, uh, searching, sorting, things like that, which gives us this new big O distinction. So the formula for calculating the number of nodes in a tree is two to the power of height minus one. So if we have the height of the tree, we can go two to the power of height minus one. So for example, think about it. If our, if our height was two, and let's go here, I think I have like a little diagram. This is brought to us by uh, this severe looking homie. And uh, it's by Doctrina, so, uh, and it was made in 2015. This is part of a larger article about the maximum height of red-black trees, which gets a little bit outside of what we're trying to do right here. But we just need this diagram right here. So let's say that we, it had a height of 2, so 1 and 2. So if it just had a height of 2, then that means that it would be, if we go back here, 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 would equal the total nodes right here. So 2 to the power of 2 would be 4 minus 1 would be 3. So if you go, it would be 1, 2, 3 nodes with a height of 2. So if we did three, a height of 3, so 1, 2, 3, it would be 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. So 2 to the power of 3 would be 8, minus 1 would be 7. That should give us our total nodes. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And if we go back, 2 to the power of 4, which is 16, minus 1 is 15. And this is one, two, three, four. So there should be 15 total nodes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, cool. So we know that that's working. So if we know the total number of nodes within a tree, we can figure out some things. So let's go to this next slide. Boom, look at that big ass slide, no good. So right here, it says, what is O of log n? So since we can figure out how many nodes are in the tree, we can simplify from we can simplify it from two to the power of height minus one. We can simplify that to just log n, where n is the total number of nodes in the list, right? And that will give us basically log n equals our height. Our height is another way of saying what choices we'll have to make, how many choices that we'll have to make to iterate through this. We can call them steps, we could call it the height, we can call it choices, whatever. Um, so he was like, what? Like, so let's figure this out. So since we're calculating big O of a binary tree, we will use what's called a base two log for the calculations. So a log base two of n would give us the height of the tree. The height of the tree would tell us how many choices we would have to make to search slash iterate through the tree. So let's go back to our diagram here. So if I had a height of one, two, three, four, then that basically means if I wanna to get to any of these leaf nodes down here, I could just make one choice, two choice, three choices, four choices. That's the number of choices that I would have to make. So that would be our O log n. That's what we're trying to get to right here. So if you think about it, if we know the number of nodes in a tree to, uh, to get the big O, we would just have to use the n, so the total number of nodes, just plug in into our formulas. So with a height of three, we know that two 
to the third minus one equals the total nodes of the tree. Okay, so we know the total nodes. That would be seven because two to the third is eight minus one is seven. So we know that the total nodes within a tree is seven within a tree with a height of three. So we can drop that negative one because the negative one is insignificant in the scheme. The main thing that we're looking at is the, is the uh, base and exponent right here. So for our purposes, the total number of n of a tree with a height of four, like let's just say that we were doing one with four instead of three, it would be 16. So if we go right here, I've got one of these. So if you, uh, this is a uh, calculator right here. So if you go two to the fourth, that would give us 16, right? Because it's two to the height. So if we had a height of four, that would give us 16. Now, normally we would do the minus one, but, but since like, like we learned early in our big O notation, if you're calculating big O and you have, you have numbers that are insignificant, they're not exponents and things like that, you can just drop them. So for all intents and purposes, in a larger sense, we know that we have around 16 total nodes. Okay, cool. So let's go here. So we can drop the negative one because it's insignificant. So for our purposes, the total n with a tree, with a tree with a height of four would be 16, right? So if we take the log base two of 16, that would give us four. So if we knew that there were 16, like whenever we code out a binary tree, we're gonna know how many nodes are in it because it has a length property on it. So if we have that length property of 16 and we take a log base two of that, so right here, let's do that. So we'll go, where's our log? Yeah, so we'll go log two of 16. And basically what a log two of 16 is gonna give you is four. So what does that four even mean and why are we trying to calculate this? If we go back here, what that means is basically we would have to make four choices to iterate ostensibly to iterate through this whole, this whole data structure. We would go one, two, three, four. Now, the reason that we can only make four choices here is because binary trees, they use something like, I guess you could call it like archetypically speaking, let's say that this was in an array format. Let's say that there were 16 elements in an array. So, and the array was unsorted. So to get from, to, to search for something in that array, you would potentially have to iterate through every single node or element until you reach the end, the end. So the big O of it would be O of N, meaning the maximum amount of calculations that I would have to make would be directly proportional with the length of the array or the number of elements within it. But with trees, especially binary trees, since since they have a relation between all of these nodes, which I went over in the last video, like like this node has a relationship with this node, meaning like if this node is a number, if the next number inserted is smaller, it'll go to the left. If it's larger, it'll go to the right. Same with this. If these all have a relation, then basically we can find the line quickest to where we're trying to go. So let's say that we were trying to get to this node right here. It would only take us a maximum of one, two, three, four to find that node. That's what the log n means. So it's basically like the idea of looking at a phone book, right? So if you look at a phone book and you have A through Z, if you go to the center of the phone book and you're like, well, I'm looking for B. Well, you've went too far in the center, so you, so you half again and half again. Every time that you're halfing the phone book trying to get to where you're at, that's basically logarithmic time. Now that would, in your mind, you might be like, well, isn't that just a big, long, sorted array? It, it, since all of our nodes within our tree have relationships between each other, it's basically a binary that you're looking at at each choice. Here you're gonna make a choice, higher or lower. Here you're gonna make a choice, higher or lower. Here you're gonna make a choice, higher or lower. That cuts down the total amount of calculations by a crazy extent. This is called, uh, the classically you can call this like divide and conquer approach, logarithmic approach. But the idea is that whenever you have relationships between all of these, like you would in a, in a, in a uh, binary search tree, the efficiencies that you have are pretty, pretty, pretty uh, extraordinary comparatively to having to iterate through the total length of an array or through a linked list or something like that. Since this has, since the way that this is set up, it does give us a bunch of efficiencies, which makes our algorithms a lot quicker. So, 
like Google, for example, if you went to Google and you search for something, since they're using a tree data structure, they don't have to iterate through everything that they have in their database. They can actually just find it very quickly. With the math that we went over earlier, now you can understand like, oh, okay, I can have all of these different nodes, but they'll have relationships, so I won't have to iterate through all of them looking for something. I can actually just go boom, 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 boom. So I can have a large, large list of data, but my runtime for finding what I want in there will be O of log in, which is a lot faster than O of n. So while the quickest thing we've went over so far in this course is O of n, and this is actually a lot faster because of the way that the, uh, the data structures are set up. So in the next one, let's actually code this out. It might help. Hang in there. We're going to code out a uh, binary tree, and we're going to go over a little bit more. This video was kind of tedious because it is some math, and it, you might have to watch it one or two times. And to be honest with you, the real big takeaways is that when you see O of log n, you just know that that's, you, that's a lot faster than O of n. And you also know that it usually probably has to do with a tree data structure of some type. So whenever you're working with trees, you're going to be getting, you're going to be using O of log n. So basically that's that. And the next video will code out a tree and uh, it might help a little bit. And if you need to rewatch this, rewatch it. Again, the math is completely theoretical and not all that important. You just need to be able to talk about it a little bit. You need to know why O of log n is faster than n. So you don't have to like get like super into it. You just, just know the basics and that'll be more than enough. Okay, so take it easy.